Yeah. Really interesting, um, some quite bold statements there. Uh, any questions from the audience for our speakers? So, Ross, yeah. Cosmos is not a QS firm, your data managers. Now, as a QS, that's quite provocative. Yeah. Over to you. It, it's a big statement. But well, probably in a, in a, there's something behind that. Yeah. yeah um, I guess as a profession, our profession is very broad, right? Yeah. A part of what we do within our profession is the management of information, whether it's quantitative information, cost information, project information. Oh. So what we're kind of saying now is that the role of the QS is changing. We're, we're not uh, quantity surveyors anymore. We're quality surveyors. We only yeah. manage quality within the projects. And that, what we're now doing is managing information quality. And that information is data. So we're now data and quality managers, not quantity surveyors anymore. Because the quantification element is becoming more and more automated. So we don't sit down anymore and quantify from 2D. That's developed by the architects, the engineers, uh, within their design process, within Revit, as you talked about earlier on, or Archicad, or whatever yeah. software. We take that information, and then we review that for a quality perspective. So our role is changing slightly, and it's going to change even more in the future when we talk about standards like ICMS, standardizing all our costs and using AI and, and machine learning to advise us so we can advise the client. So we're, we're, I guess we're changing in terms of our profession now. But I'm just wondering, do the audience agree that we have like a quality problem in construction? And that quality of information is probably not as coordinated as it should be. It's not coordinated at all, I would say. So if you haven't got good coordinated information, you can't quantify. Yeah. So if, just to put it into simple terms, we talked to someone talked about silos earlier on. Mm. If you take a design project, you have the design silo, at the architectural silo and the engineering silo. Generally, you have two silos. And inside each silo, you have multiple smaller silos. So inside the engineering silo, you have, you have structures, you have electric, you have mechanical, you have ventilation, cooling, depending on the complexity of your project. That's five different silos within one silo. And as the design process develops, each silo develops their own design, each silo specifies and writes their own specification, and then you look at all those silos in the design process, who and which profession looks across all the silos, looks at all the information, reads the documentation, looks at the models, uh, sits down with the design team to discuss, that's the quantity surveyor. So we're the first and potentially the only discipline that looks across all information on the project. So from that perspective, the quantity surveyor becomes the quality surveyor. In our Does community. the quality surveyor become the information manager? I know we've got engineers here in the audience. I mean, are the quantity surveyors the best people to manage the information? Or is it, or is it the people who create the information? Yeah. You know, the, the engineers who create the information. I would say Are each, the people each that system manages their own information. And right. And that's managed under the hierarchy of the BIM execution plan or ICT agreement, mm -hmm. which is covered by ISO. So each discipline manages that. But the transfer of information and how we use yeah. that information, that becomes a big challenge, as you, as you mentioned. And I think the quantity surveyor is the, is the key profile and the key discipline in that, in terms of reviewing the information to make sure it's a standard. I would argue that a lot of companies today are doing BIM, but from a design perspective, it's purely cache detection. So it's geometrical instead of information. And as we develop into more depth, in depth information, like King's Planner is developing in terms of the product and the EDPs in the future, it, it will mean that we're going to be managing an awful lot more information that needs to be standardized um, so that it can be transferred so people can work with it, like using ICMS as a standard. So I think the role of the QS is changing. Any, any comments from the audience about the ICMS? Um, there's also an there is also an international property measurement standard. Mm -hmm. There's a there's an sorry an, an international land me uh, measurement standard. So that term measurement just seems to be a little bit dated. Yeah, it's as I said, uh, yeah. ICMS was international construction measurement standards, cost measurement standards, construction management standards, but. It's important to understand that it's not a measurement rule per se, it's a structure of data yeah. and information. We will be able to measure it in the future when we collect all that information. Any question any other questions? Sarah. Yeah. Um, Sarah from Rawls. Um, basically you mentioned about your file name 
and that the length of it was getting longer and longer. And this kind of question for all of us as well, and that's more of an in-house, and I guess you could tie it into setting up common data environments as well. But what are your opinions on the fo having a folder structure and those files? Because like that, if your name, your file name continues to grow and grow to add that more information at the end, you're going to have that error, I don't know if you've ever seen it, that you get the file path that's too long. So I kind of want to know what, what's your opinion and how do you manage that in your, in your work at the moment? Yeah, it, we, we, we haven't meant that yet because, like I said, that, that is short. It never gets any longer than, uh, just get too descriptive, but other than it's the product name on the wall and then the file extension at the end of it. The folder structure is kept short and we do reduce the files so if it's only kind of project code, or pro, yeah, the project code and then would be the, the, the folder structure and then you've got the, it's either the work in progress, share, publish or archive, and then you've got the file in there. It's always under the, the 140, but before we did meet uh, issues when file or family names were, were called multiple, like there is different standards for naming families and some people cooperate their own ones, and that's where we met the most issues. We, we came up with an, uh, a standard for naming families as well, if it's a rank profile, generic model or so on. And we've abbreviated it and we've included on the standard like that. Bin bundles, we don't go over them as well because we keep them to that. So it, it is an issue and we, we have rectified it. Um, the most of the stuff we do on our, we have a OneDrive, that, then that's backed up to, to, to do something high and then that removes it. So I don't know, do you use anything to that? Do you name your folders? Using any, any sort of name convention or standard, or are they just named like your your type? Like what what how do you get around that? So type for is this Revit content we're developing or yeah. anything? So yeah, we would we would remove well reduce creation of a folder folders as much as we can. So now you can see you don't want a folder structure that kind of goes out of play. Out of, <laughs> standardization very quickly. So yeah, try to get that. And that's some of the challenge that we, we have of when we're getting businesses to kind of develop along with us. So we do go into that kind of role where we're overseeing what we're developing. And once they see the structure of what we're trying to do, it is, it, is, it, it is easier to get. And that's why it's good about having the unique file identifier. So it's only ever going to be a rabbit. Uh, File PDF, or there's a group of our exporter from Rabbit, we call that different, so it doesn't catch. So it's a tree of different things. If it's a generic model, we call it GM, profiles, PR, yeah. and we put in the Rabbit version on it, so um, make it easy for people to know what to work with, so they don't have to work with multiple. Plus, we always work in Rabbit 19, so we stay behind the designer, so then they update, so they, they can't open a file that we developed in 22 or 32, 20. So, yeah, all of that has kind of been. So it does kind of go into the, the folder structure that you were talking about. Thanks, Leah. And do you use barcodes? Yeah, well, we had GS1 and we were talking with yeah. them um, and we were looking at, at seeing how we're actually going to do it. One of the, the challenges that we have is that if we have a, a panel that's been produced at 50 metres long and it's been cut up on site, what, what does the barcode then become? Is it going to be on one panel? So that's what we're trying to look at saying. How can we get all that done? So mm. we're looking at kind of But I was at DCW uh, a few weeks ago in London and they actually had they had the, the G tens were embedded into the material through using nano technology. So it wasn't actually a barcode, it was actually in the in the product itself. Yeah, no yeah. So in other words, yeah, you didn't need to you just walked up to it and you got your, your scan. You didn't actually have to physically so the the paper the paper barcodes will disappear. Yeah. Um, which is interesting to see. And that's the AI piece coming in as well. Geraldine, you, thanks for joining us and thanks for staying with us. And um, um, I'm just conscious of the time. Any, everyone's talking about MMC. This month alone, there are three conferences in Dublin on MMC. Um, where are we moving along with this? Um, will we be able to order something online and get it delivered and put on site? Is it that simple? Are there any examples internationally that we can learn from? I certainly think there are lots of 
examples. Lots, there are lots of examples internationally. Um, from, a, from, a, from an Irish perspective, there's still quite an amount of work uh, mm -hmm. ongoing in MMC. Mm -hmm. And a couple and a couple of a couple of issues. Uh, heretofore, the the solution in Ireland has been through Agrima um, and Agrima certification, and there's quite a widespread um, takeoff of of Agrima in the in the Irish sector. I think the some of the areas that that are required to be addressed in terms of modern methods actually go beyond the, the technical standards certification and actually are are much more related to the, the infrastructure of the sector uh, in terms of volume, uh, uh, scale of scale of construction. So I think there's there's a number of I think you're right. There's a lot of there's a lot of issues yet to be developed and addressed. The sheer scale of as you say the number of events this this mm, month alone mm, mm. indicates just how much interest how much activity. Interest. Mm. But interest, but I also think also activity. Um, from, from government right through to industry uh, in addressing this area. So that there, there's no doubt that it offers huge potential. There is definitely huge scope for, for productivity improvements, for cost improvements. Mm. But there is a way to go, and there's a way to go with the, with the basic yeah. infrastructure. There's a way to go just to modernise the industry. <laughs> the mind modernised, uh, you know, off-site construction. So listen, I think I'm going to bring things to a close because it, uh, we're, we're, we're kind of pushed a little bit on time and we're due to finish. Is it quarter past a half eleven, Suzanne? Quarter. quarter past. Okay. So I just wanted to thank you all for, for joining us this morning and a big shout out to the speakers who presented uh, over the last number of months. Uh, we had um, 15, 16 speakers and I suppose when we started back in February, for, we, we, I said we were committed to in-person events. Now, this is probably the smallest audience we've had so far. Um, perhaps it's to do with the bank holiday, but we'll be back again in September, and hopefully the numbers will, will, will increase significantly. We had up to 40, 45 maybe at one of the events this year. We are fully committed to being in-person. That is the big commitment that we have made, and we made that commitment to our board. Um, the series has been very successful from our perspective. Uh, it's been spotted by the EU group, uh, that the, uh, the Deloitte group are managing the EU SME group, and we're now involved in advisory capacity on that group. We looked at vision, uh, setting the vision back in February, and uh, Emma Hayes and Liz O'Brien and Mark did a great job. Uh, just, I suppose, uh, Emma with her experience in working with SMEs, uh, to Mark's uh, message about how they transform their business, not you, by just rebranding, but by getting Emma to help them as an SME. We also heard about culture, uh, the need to, for cultural change. I think Saoirse did a great job. She'll be with us again in Athlone at the gathering. Uh, Saoirse is obviously, she's ex Autodesk, very, very experienced Enterprise Ireland uh, senior technologist and uh, working with a lot of um, sort of Enterprise Ireland clients and successful um, companies who are obviously looking to, to export their services internationally. Rob did a great job as well. David again with us in Athlone last week. Very powerful message about his work in information management. I see Sarah with us this morning. Sarah spoke uh, at our third event which is all about good information practice. Hopefully Sarah you'll be with us back in Athlone in, in September. And again, uh, you know, um, we had, we, had, we had talked to Liam and Jonathan, again, two very experienced technologists. Uh, on to uh, last month, we looked at this big issue of sustainability, and it was great to have Mary Meehan from um, Irish Green Building Council. I know we're represented. Irish Green Building Council were here today. Lorenzo and Michael, again, fantastic messages about the importance of sustainable practice for SMEs. And I think, you know, standards, very, very important. And I think having you here today, uh, Geraldine, was, was very important. Obviously, CEO of NSAI, you need to probably talk to this gentleman here about getting, uh, if you're interested in, the, in, in getting that sort of certification. Uh, matter of interest, many companies are certified with BIM in Ireland with NSAI? Many? There's, there's, see, the last time I checked, and I didn't check, I haven't yeah. checked now in a while, there's probably 
10, 15 companies. Okay. So, so the take up is slow yeah. to date. There's a kind of a big push in it, but I think, I'm not sure if SMEs are identifying with formal, uh, you know, cert strict certified processes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of talk, uh, I know, within Build Digital about developing some form of SME, a lighter version, not a sort of uh, rigid version. But uh, thank you, and thank you also, Jonathan. I would love to visit your Icon Centre at some stage. And Ross, uh, you're right about the QSs. We need to, we need to move on. Um, so again, thank you to our members uh, in, in, in 2023. Uh, we need to engage with these companies, 120, 110, 120 companies. A lot of them were at our events this year. We'd like to see all of these companies come to Mount Loan on the 20th of September. We've got uh, a fantastic range of companies subscribing to CETA. Um, be they clients, be they architects, be they engineers, contractors, uh, and government government agencies. Um, I feel very passionate that that, that needs to need to expand on this and uh, provide a quality service to these members. But thank you for committing to CETA and for subscribing to the alliance. I'm not sure if you can see this slide. It may be a poor quality, but it was, it, what it does show us is the range of training that's taking place uh, just this month alone with the Alliance and supporting CETA Skillnet. I suppose because the government is awash with cash, they have given a lot of money to the various networks uh, across the country. And it's come in quite a space. But we feel that, you know, I suppose the big message is, if you're on this list of companies, support your network, support CETA Skillnet. We can reduce the costs of your training by up to 30%. And if you're even doing a master's degree or you're studying part-time or you're going to college full-time, a lot of people don't realise that full-time students can be subsidised as well through CETA Skillnet. You can reduce the cost of, your edu of, of education. So again, uh, thank you to those who support the Skillnet. But we'd like to see, the, again, that or the, the members getting behind CETA, making it stronger, making sure the CETA deliver, deliver on its targets. And of course, we move on to the gathering in 23. We were not alone. Was it last week or the week before? Beautiful day. You could have been on the Med <laughs> with all the boats going up and down the Shannon. But, you know, it's going to be, we, we need the support. Uh, BIM gathering in September is the first gathering we've had uh, since 2019. That highlight we had in Galway in 2019. We all know what happened since 2019. Uh, 2021, uh, we were online, or 22, we were online, uh, sorry, yes, uh, sorry, 21 we were online. Last year we had the tech, the, 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 the tech event. So we're back in person in September. We've got a little over 100 days left, so it's bearing down on us. Um, we've got some great supporters for the way of sponsors. If any of our members, any of you here in the audience are interested in supporting us, even it, it would be really appreciative. Uh, we'll be announcing hopefully our keynotes in the next few days online and um, we're really looking forward to the event. We have over 33 abstracts so we're hoping obviously get to get those papers in over the next uh, three to four weeks so we can publish those proceedings. We'll be back in September with our sixth of our eighth series and this will really give um, a lot of our sponsors an opportunity uh, to talk about how SMEs need to embrace technology but also the need to be incentivised to embrace technology. And there's great support through Enterprise Ireland, through the local enterprise offices, um, and so forth. And, and even through organisations like uh, events like, or um, funds like, like Skillnets. So we'll hear more, more about what new technologies are coming down the track. And um, we'll be back, is it early September? Late September, the week after the gathering? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so listen, thanks very much for joining us.